Hey traders, this is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group with your end of day recap for Thursday and some more continuations today in U.S. markets. Um, we actually had, we kind of came in in the day and uh, it, well, I should say last night we started to see S&P futures rally and just not something that we've been accustomed to lately. A couple of years ago, yes, uh, I would say a lot of our, a lot of the moves happened, uh, you know, a, a couple of years ago they were happening in the overnight markets and then we would kind of come in and, and the markets would just kind of train, trade in a very uh, range-bound manner for um, for a good couple of months that was going on, where most of the move was happening overnight. So to see the the S and P futures up about uh, twenty basis points. Uh, you know, we've been so lucky, I think, to be walking in every day and, and have the market, have S&P or, or NASDAQ, whatever, small cap futures, uh, basically flat or unched when we walk in. So I actually got a little bit anxious. I was like, oh, we're actually up 25 basis points, um, something that we just haven't seen. So there was a couple of catalysts last night, but I'm not going to go into everything here because this is, we just want this to be about a 10 minute video. But um, one of the major things that happened last night was um, just all of Asia's rallying and nobody's really continues to really talk about this it doesn't it, it to me there's just not enough attention to it um i i listen you know i have cnbc on in the background all day long or bloomberg and people are talking about wow we're going up despite all these geopolitical things going on and it's like the same story over and over um and nobody's saying hey did you see what happened last night in the overnight markets you know nikkei was up the hang sang was up 80 basis points china was up one point so despite the the downgrade and moody's Shanghai was up 1.8%. Um, there was a currency, big currency move that happened as well, but South Korea is up 1.1%. 1, 1 .1%. They actually just released their consumer, like their consumer confidence numbers, just came out after the close, and uh, they're really, really strong. I think they were. I have it here in our group chat here. Um, we have 108 versus 101. So despite, you know, the media is focusing on North Korea and South Korea. Hey, they've been in conflict for a long time. And this is some, this is not something new, in my opinion. Uh, you know, I'm not a political expert about um, foreign affairs, but there's been tensions with North Korea and South Korea for years. The fact that we're just focusing on it, I think, is misleading people a bit. I just don't think you should, you would see consumer uh, their their South Korea consumer confidence numbers go climb from a 108 to a 101. I think we're missing something here, and I think again, um, the fact that what the media is highlighting may not necessarily be everything that's going on. That's my that's my whole point with that. Kospi up 1.1 percent. Uh, then look at. Uh, Look at India. India continues to to be in beast mode. Um, you know what? Up twenty two percent now, year to date. Uh, the the Nifty. So you know there's other things going on. So you go to our markets. Up a half a percent on the day. S and P up half a percent. We're not. Comp we're still not comparing to what international markets are are doing. Um, Europe actually. You know. So basically, basically what I was talking about is Asia. Europe was actually flat. So there wasn't any stellar outperformance uh, there coming from Europe. So they kind of took the day off. But um, you know, the major story. Um, we'll, you know, S and P breaking out to 52 week highs. Um, and it's been now since this big red day. One, two, three, four, five, six days in a row. Um, so I'm going to give you my market view in a second, but Nasdaq also, um, you know, just amazing. And and finally, some of the some of the Fang stocks, which I know everybody's been anxious about, why aren't the Fang stocks performing? Uh, they actually had a real nice day today. So it started with the Netflix um, price target raise. Hey, we saw a really nice uh, Netflix order yesterday. I kind of made the screw up of the day. We're kind of laughing about it in the in the trading room because I went into Netflix yesterday. And listen, I've got a lot of positions on, and it's just a matter of I actually own all four stocks, uh, four of the Fang stock. Excuse me. Yesterday, I owned all four of the Fang stocks, one way or another. And I said, you know what? This is a little bit. Uh, I've got a little bit too much risk on, and I took off Netflix. I put it on in the morning, and I took it off at the end of the day. And um, the reason why, one of the reasons why I put it on is because we saw a really aggressive call buyer yesterday in the room. So shame on me. A lot of traders had the trade on, so they were celebrating uh, in the Tribeca trade room. But uh, I took it off and they got a really nice price increase, 52-week high, just a uh, colossal day for Netflix, up, five per, uh, up $5, up 3%. Uh, besides that, um, I'm really not complaining here because I've been long Amazon here and uh, I've had a whole bunch of call spreads on and uh, that's been one of, one of my best trades over the last 
couple weeks to just sit and stay long Amazon. Google, I'm also long Google and crushing it here. And finally, Facebook woke up. So Facebook, the last two days, we kind of just knew it was going to happen. We just haven't seen any call buying action. We really haven't seen buyers come in. And so the last two days, we saw a small call buyer yesterday and then some repeat action today. Not huge, not as big as the Netflix order was yesterday. Um, but um, but nevertheless, buyers are coming back into Facebook. Um, Apple, you know, I really didn't look at Apple too much. I'm, I'm a little bit worried that they that there was a headline this morning about the iPhone, next iPhone release may be delayed. I don't think that'll be the best thing for Apple in the short term. Maybe it'll be a good opportunity to buy it. Nevertheless, I'm not in this one and I'm kind of waiting for to see to see what happens with this one. Or, um, and also I'm waiting for a lot of call buyers to step in. We've seen a little light call buying. Uh, we also saw a little bit of put buying today too. Some guys, you know, you see them on Twitter and they only talk about one side flow. They only say, oh, well, there was a call buyer. Well, there's also a put buyer today and, and some put buying in Apple as well. So to me, that doesn't that doesn't um, make me want to jump right into the stock right here. So again, I've got enough exposure in some of the momentum names. Speaking of the momentum names, um, Momo caught a nice call buyer today. I actually started a position in this. Um, I It didn't actually, it closed down on the day, but you got a hammer bar forming on the on the 50-day moving average my stop is the 50-day moving average uh an atr and a half below the 50-day moving average so i gave it a shot against this support if it breaks i'm out but i'll see if it can actually recover here it's been now three or four days of down days since earnings since a pretty good earnings report i don't really, really like the macd crossover here but we'll see if it starts to kind of uh you know, hang out here for a little bit. There was, like I said, a small call buyer in uh, in Momo today. So um, that's what I thought was quite interesting about it. Wuba also reported earnings today. Uh, this is a name I like. I just didn't pull the trigger yet in going into the position. Um, the, you know, I was either looking to do it in cash or options. The options are pretty pathetic in this. So I, I want to maybe give it a couple days from earnings, but I, I really like this stock. I like how the chart looks, especially when you look at it um, a little bit longer term. I think it's got a lot of upside, considering that the the earnings was were, were pretty pretty darn good. This is a five year chart of it. Notice the golden cross, uh, 50 day rising up, over the 200 day moving average, and um, and then finally, last thing I'll talk about is the China, you know, with these Chinese internets, and then I'll get off the subject. But uh, ooh, they actually finished up on the day. I'm waiting for these to kind of come in a little bit more. Uh, the whole group, I would really like to put a position on the whole group, considering I think the there's a lot of risk owning single stock, but it just hasn't, you know, I, I, I may start a position tomorrow because I'm just not getting that pullback that I want to see. Um, or, you know, maybe I end up doing it on Monday. So um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, other uh, oil, um, we'll talk about oil for a minute. OPEC, you know, there really wasn't, I, I was surprised at how much oil sold off today. Um, I, I do think these OPEC meetings are a sell the news event, uh, so I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I would wouldn't be surprised, or I wouldn't have been surprised if oil was down about a couple percent today. Um, I was surprised that it was down over five percent, um, and uh, really a lot of the which which we talked about yesterday, a lot of the energy plays. We actually saw a lot of, a lot of little call buying um, in various different names, but most of the stuff was very, very high speculative. We didn't see any big chunky orders where somebody was putting in like 5,000 contracts purchased for $1.50. It was like 5,000 contracts purchased for like 10 cents. So really somebody was speculating a little bit. Notice where oil stalled out right at the 200-day moving average. Um, are, you know, should we be worried about oil? Uh, you should be worried about oil if you're in oil stocks or energy stocks. I'm not in any any energy stocks. Um, I don't like the charts. I think they look atrocious. Um, you know, we talked about this in the trading room a little bit earlier, so I'm going to kind of giving you a recap. But I mean, if, if you look at, um, let me just change this. We'll look at we'll look at XOP first. Uh, sorry, I wanted to change the chart here a little bit because I'm zoomed in a little bit too much. Uh, XOP. So if you look at this particular chart, notice that we had, it had never got over the 50-day moving average. And it's since it broke the 200-day the moving average and the death cross where the 50-day moving averages falls below the 200-day moving average, that's your get out of dodge uh, signal. Uh, plus breaking the 200-day moving average was here. Um, you know, no, no, no. Uh, I, you know, do not, for me, um, if you're disciplined and if you're a trend trader, below the 200-day moving average, 
you know, usually, uh, and I'm borrowing a phrase from somebody, I believe, but nothing really good happens once you get below the 200 day moving average. It's just how it works. Um, the usually any type of, of any, t any type of big downtrend usually starts below the 200 day moving average. How long will it stay below the 200 day moving average? I have no idea, but not something that I want to even play with remotely, maybe for a day trade. I mean, look at the volume confirming that breakdown in OIH today. Um, so no thank you. Uh, will it affect the overall market? You know, I don't know. Um, you could speculate what's going on with oil. I just think there's, there's a, my personal take, again, which is, you know, just an opinion, is that there's a lot of supply out there. There's, there's other alternative energies that are being used as well. So the fact that, you know, there's a lot of oil out there, I, I don't really think it's that much of a demand issue. I think there's just the world is awash with, with oil. They're finding oil all over the place. They're finding it. They're doing, you know, obviously with fracking and all this other stuff, they're, um, they're, they're being more efficient with, with how they're getting oil out, out of the ground. So, uh, and then there's alternative energies too that, that are getting better. So I just think it's a, I'm uh, sorry to say this, but it's just my opinion. I think it's a dying industry. Um, I think there are just better places to put your money right now. Um, the last thing, um, not the last thing, but I'll talk about uh, IWM as well. Uh, you know, this is the, got, the one that's got me most concerned because every time it seems like it starts to get going, it stalls. So IWM was up about 50, 60 basis points today, and um, it finished. It did finish in the green, but you know, this is really lackluster price action. So. I'm, you know, still keeping an eye on that. So that's one negative and the oil market is a negative. I'll tell you what's positive. Look at airlines. Um, this is the jet, uh, jets chart or jets ETF, excuse me, breaking out 52 week high. Look at this thing. Um, you know, the major, this is global airlines, but if you look at the components, um, you know, this looks, <laughs> this looks really bullish to me, a breakout in airlines, really, really strong. Um, again, this is United, this is Southwest, this is American Airlines. And if you go through one of the one stock by stock by stock, you know, even though uh, United had that, you know, video that went viral, which we all know about that, it's a 52 week high in United. Look at LUV. You know, we saw this about a week ago and nobody was really talking about, um, that Southwest Airlines increased their dividends, their buyback plan. It happened last Wednesday, and since then it's been taking off. Sorry, uh, couldn't help it. Um, but th I think that was that was back here, and it's had maybe one negative day since there. And 52-week high in the airlines, you know, another positive I would say for for market bulls. Um, so we're coming up upon a three-day weekend. I did a lot of uh, reducing some of my positions. Um, I was in Goldman. I was in I was in uh, Citigroup. I took those positions off. I can get right back into them. I just don't want to carry a lot of risk. I you know I've had a great couple of months of trading, and I think at some point, especially for a long going into a long weekend, hey, put that money in your back pocket. Put that keep that in your account. We're gonna get some more opportunities, but. Um, you know, looking again, what I, how I started the video off saying one, two, three, four, five, six video, six straight up days. We're not overbought. Um, we're not overbought. So we don't have to worry about that. But going into a long weekend, hey, there's going to be plenty of opportunities to trade next week. Um, so I took off, you know, you can, I'll even show you my position, some, some of my posi positions here. You can see a lot of selling today that I did. Um, really, you know, home runs on a lot of this. So um, a lot of my positions, you could see, if you're a member of Tribeca Trade Group, you could see me put these positions on all day. You could see me take them off. This is the activity that we had today. Um, you know, one new trade for me today, which was a stellar trade, um, which was Xilinx. Uh, but look at all the exits I took. Um, Pepsi, huge winner. Uh, I'm leaving, it's marking now at 95 cents, which is almost a double in two days. Uh, Cypress, huge winner. Uh, Xilinx took pro I actually um, so this was a this was a neat little trade today I put on calls outright in the morning and then as the stock went up I sold out of the money uh, call spread so I actually made it uh, excuse me I sold out of the money calls making it into a call spread so I hit targets on the calls outright and I um, and then I once I turned it into a call spread I, I hit a target on the call spread as well so um, you know, took a couple other trades off, uh, craft. I took off, I took off CF, um, which came back to my cost basis after hitting uh, a couple targets in this one. Um, MSCC, which we put on yesterday, we hit a target in that one. 
Um, this is the wrong price. This should be 380 on there. Micron, huge, huge winner since I added to it last week. So some really nice um, profits. And, uh, you know, for the long weekend, I, I want to lighten up on risk. Um, not to say that I'm seeing any signals or anything like that. I'm still very much long, but I just don't want to be as long uh, going into a long weekend. So um, I think that's it. We covered it's 15 minutes of a video, longer than I always want to go. Um, the All of the trades for today, there, there was also some good ones. I just don't want to go over every trade. You have to be um, a member of Tribeca Trade Group for me to go into detail about all of those. But it's been really hot in terms of activity that we've seen the last three days. Just a lot more of the last three days, a lot more than, um, than normal or a lot more than average, um, really good looking trades on the call side. Um, so I'll leave it there. Thanks very much. And, uh, I'll see you guys back in the trading room bright and early tomorrow morning. Have a great night.